Уважаемая госпожа Пак Кон Хю, уважаемые... Distinguished Shinzo Abe, dear friends, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to welcome you to Vladivostok, to the second Eastern Economic Forum. This year, over 3,000 guests from 35 countries of the world have gathered here, which is a testimony to a growing interest of political and business circles of the Asia-Pacific region and other regions to Russia in our Far Eastern agenda, to our steps and initiatives, opening up absolutely new opportunities for cooperation and implementation of promising projects at the Far East. We set a truly ambitious, large-scale goal to turn the Far East into one of the centers of social and economic development of our country a powerful, vibrant, and advanced center. As already mentioned, it is one of our most important national priorities. We already see real changes here, the first ones, but still very important and inspiring results. For example, current industrial output growth in the Far East exceeds 5%. On the whole, in the country, there is a modest growth of 0.3%, and it is 5% at the Far East. Over the last year, over 1 trillion of rubles of investments have been additionally invested into the region, which is around 15 billion US dollars. Over 300 investment projects have been launched, which means that business support mechanisms that have been put forth are called for. And finally, a consolidated and the most valuable indicator of ongoing changes in the Far East is an evolving positive demographic trend. For the first time over the quarter of a century in the Khabarovsk Krai, in Sakhalin, in Yakutia and Chukotka, population started to grow. For the third year in a row, birth rate exceeds death rate in the Far Eastern Federal District. Less and less people live Far East. Outflow unfortunately continues, but on the hello, in the Far Eastern Federal District, migration outflow over the first six months have decreased by 3.5 percent. Of course, demographic indicators are modest, but let me stress that they demonstrate a trend that has emerged and we must catch it up to make it irreversible. In the upcoming three years, we need to ensure sustainable population growth in the Far East. I would like to draw the attention of the government, all ministers and agencies, to the need to prioritize this goal in the state programs. First of all, in the area of economy, demographics, social sector, housing, health care, and education. Ladies and gentlemen, at the core of the strategy of the development of the Far East is openness for cooperation, the broadest international cooperation, particularly because the Far East is literally in the center of dynamic integration processes. The Eurasian Economic Union is advancing. Its international ties are growing. Already in October this year, Moscow is going to hold the first round of negotiations on the agreement for trade and economic cooperation between the Eurasian Economic Union countries and People's Republic of China. Thus creating the framework for a comprehensive Eurasian partnership in the 5 plus 1 format. Trading economic agenda of the SEO is becoming more formidable and promising, particularly taking into account an upcoming full-fledged accession to the organization of India and Pakistan, hopefully followed by Iran. In other words, today a number of integration frameworks are evolving in Eurasia which flexibly complement each other and lead to the implementation of projects based on the principles of mutual benefit. We believe that this integration network, the system of multilateral and bilateral agreements, including on the areas of free trade, could form the backbone for the development of a greater Eurasian partnership. That was the idea discussed at the St. Petersburg Economic Forum that took place in summer this year. Right now, together with our colleagues from the Eurasian Economic Union, we are working on consolidated practical proposals 
for the development of such a broad Eurasian integration. They include the issues of regulatory framework, streamlining administrative procedures, removing trade barriers, sustaining trade and investment flows, technological and production cooperation, protecting intellectual property and developing infrastructure. We believe that efficient integration can be built only on the basis of equality of all the participants, respect and mutual account of interests without any political or economic dictate and imposing unilateral advantages. We understand integration as predictable long-term rules as openness for cooperation with other countries and associations in the East as well as in the West. We would be ready to carefully study all other proposals and to search for the best possible solutions with all those interested in that kind of cooperation. We understand that these are large-scale, complex and long-term goals. The project that I have, I have mentioned can be implemented based on a flexible multi-level model with the use of creative solutions for the benefit of economic growth and greater prosperity of the population of this vast region. The engine, the driving force of our integration should be energy and initiative coming from the business community. It's obvious and ever-growing demand for removing barriers and developing large markets with a business-friendly environment. Naturally, this integration should lean on tangible projects that would literally sue together our economic space and create additional resources for development. Let me mention a number of such projects and opportunities. First, a reliable energy infrastructure. We welcome the initiative of companies of Russia, Japan, the Republic of Korea, and China for the establishment of an energy supering that will interconnect our countries. For a more rapid, dynamic implementation of this project, we suggest that inter an intergovernmental working group be established. Let me stress that Russia would be ready to provide for competitive electricity price in the APR of our region and to make it fixed for long term. Second, of course, transport infrastructure, the development of new competitive trans-Eurasian and regional routes. As an example, let me cite transport corridors Primoria 1 and Primoria 2, which let, over a shortest period of time, deliver cargoes from the northeastern provinces of China to the ports in the south of the Primorsky Krai, as well as the construction of the Russian part of the transportation route Europe West China. These initiatives, as well as many other transportation routes, are going to be discussed at the Presidium of the State Council. Third, we live at the age of information societies, rapid development of digital, telecommunication, and internet technologies. We need to use these opportunities for the interests of cooperation so that power bodies, companies of our countries could do their job and cooperate in a convenient digital format. Thus, common space of digital economy could be formed. I'm talking about legal and technological conditions for electronic cooperation. I task the government to come up with a detailed action plan on the field, particularly because certain achievements have been made in this field. The Eurasian Economic Commission is already working on the development of an integrated information system for cooperation in the area of transport, foreign trade, customs, veterinary, tax, and other procedures. Fourth, we need to create human resources and technologies for the future. Thus, we invite partners to join the development of an international science, education, and technology cluster at the Ruski Island. We are going to develop the startup support system, including venture capital financing. We are planning to set up a network of labs for joint scientific research, develop modern business infrastructure, including business and exhibition centers. We're interested in foreign professors and students coming here, research creative project teams from other countries working here. As far as I know, 2,500 foreign students study here on the 
side of the Far Eastern Federal University, dozens of professors from other countries. Together with my colleagues, we have attended the official ceremony for the launching of the Far Eastern Oceanarium. It's not just a commercial center. It is a scientific, educational, awareness-raising center where we do hope there are going to be well-established cooperation at the level of leading scientists coming from the region, the whole world, who study the biology of for the sea. I task the government to speed up the development of a comprehensive program for the development of the Ruski Island. Ladies and gentlemen, the projects that I have mentioned reflect the variety of opportunities for joint cooperation in the Far East. In order to make it a center of attraction for integration, the platform for cooperation, the most favorable conditions are being fostered. For example, from the 1st of October, in the free port of Vladivostok, there's going to be a single window mode introduced for all those passing the state border. There's going to be an around the clock mode for the border checkpoints and electronic declaration. Yesterday, I met the representatives of the business community. I know that there are certain problems outstanding issues, but we've listened to your comments. We are going to improve our efforts. For example, the government is already working on facilitating the procedure for visa issuance for foreign citizens arriving in the free port. Our plan is to settle all the formalities through the internet portal of the Russian foreign ministry and to receive an electronic visa. By the way, the free port regime, in addition to Vladivostok, has been extended to yet four more harbors of the Far East, Vanina in the Khabarovsk Krai, Korsakov in the Sahalinsk region, Petropavlovsk Kamchatsky in the Kamchatsky Krai, and Pavak in Chukotki. And more such zones are going to be created if needed. At the meeting with the business community that has mentioned, certain representatives of the business community said that those concession regimes are not sufficient, and they complained and mentioned the need to increase a number of such concessions. Yesterday, we also discussed the development of advanced special economic zones. A number of issues were was raised regarding the procedure for giving profit tax concessions. I agree that we need to take into account the specific nature of projects, their scope and deadlines. I believe that tax concession period should be extended for large long-term projects. Yesterday, this issue was discussed with the Minister of Finance of the Russian Federation. Uh, the Finance Ministry agrees to that, and I task the Finance Ministry to come up with relevant amendments to the legislation as soon as possible. We believe there's going to be a lot of big, large-scale projects with its geography, natural resources, and direct access to the promising world markets. The Far East opens up endless opportunities for the development of entrepreneurship. I mentioned that need to turn the Far Eastern regions into the centers that will serve an ex as an example in the use of best practice and regulatory framework, permit procedures, supervisory activity, and business support institutes. In order to foster entrepreneurship, we have come up with a project of giving free of charge land plots to the citizens of the Russian Federation, the so-called Far Eastern Hector. Right now, this project is being implemented in a pilot mode, and the first results have demonstrated that this project have, has huge capabilities. It is important not only to give land, but to help people develop it. Citizens who would want to set up their business on this land will enjoy support measures from the Cooperation for the Development of uh, Small and Medium Enterprises in legal, property-related, and credit-related fields. Let me add that for small and medium enterprises working in advanced special economic zones and free port, the cooperation is going to extend the credit-related guarantees up to 75 percent. There is yet another problem, infrastructure constraints and uncompetitive costs. Of course, we need to remove this burden from the business community to let them increase their returns and make their projects more efficient to give them wings, so to say. I do hope that the new composition of the parliament will make it a priority to come up with a law until the end of the year 
which would aim at reducing electricity tariffs in the Far East until the level which is average in Russia. We've discussed this issue for a while, but the relevant decision has been made. In the regions where tariff is clearly overestimated, where it is a barrier to the development of uh, business and it worsens the day-to-day -day life of citizens, the situation should be corrected as soon as possible. Besides, already today we are giving direct state subsidies to investors for the development of transport, energy and other infrastructure to set up new production. Right now we are working on improving yet another support mechanism. Investors who will independently build external infrastructure for new production will receive this support from the state. I'm not going to give all the details because there are different proposals on the table there under discussion and hopefully a final decision will be made. At the same time, we need to let companies attract affordable financial resources. That goal is being addressed by the Fund for the Development of the Far East, which provides financial resources at the rate of 5% per annum. The demand is high. Entrepreneurs are literally standing in the line. And in order not to create barriers to launching new projects, we need to address the issue of additional capital top up of the fund. And naturally, we are faced with a task to develop financial and investment infrastructure in the Far East. Certain projects in this field are already underway. At the forum, we could get acquainted with the presentation of a new investment system, Voshot, which would open up direct access to shares and bonds of Far Eastern companies for domestic and foreign investors. Let me stress that on the sidelines of the forum, an agreement was signed between the agency of the Far East for attracting investments and export support with one of the leading global banks, the Japanese Bank for International Cooperation, JBIC. Joint platform is going to be established to attract Japanese investors to the advanced special economic zones and the free port. A good example of mutually beneficial investment cooperation has become the Sino Russian Agricultural Fund that has been launched recently, which supports export oriented projects in agriculture and food sector. I believe that the Far East, with its land, maritime resources, could become one of the leading and largest suppliers of qualitative, environmentally friendly food for the Asia Pacific region, where over 60% of the global population live. I invite our partners from Japan, the Republic of Korea, and other countries to consider the development of similar joint investment platforms that could fo focus on financing projects not only in agriculture, but also in industry, in the area of high technologies, and development of natural resources. In other words, in sectors that have enormous capabilities. However, we need to interconnect access to our natural resources with investments to their processing and task the government to come up with such a mechanism and implement it for the parties. The approach should be very simple. If you want to get a preferential right to use feedstock, aquaculture, forest reserves, if you want to develop natural resources fields, then you should build processing plants, bring in technologies, create jobs, and create high added value. Dear friends, the future of the Far East is inseparable from the future of Russia. That's what our ancestors believed in, who developed Far Eastern lands and brought glory to their fatherland. We ushered in a new historic stage in the development of uh, these Eastern territories for many decades ahead. The tasks we are faced with in the Far East are unprecedented in their scope and significance. We fully realize our enormous responsibility to the people of Russia and future generations. I believe in the implementation of all the plans we have set forth, and I'm confident in the success of our Far East. I thank you for your attention.